QuickBase webhooks are very similar to email notifications in that they're both triggered from a change of a record. So we, you could call it a record change notification or a record change webhook. Uh, instead of email, we're going to be using the API to be able to do something else to QuickBase or other web service. So in this scenario here, we're just going to do it inside of QuickBase. I've got a contacts table up here with uh, a bunch of contacts and I've copied this table and made a, uh, another table over here. It's really by copying the app and then absorbing the, the table. And over here you can see that there's nothing in this table whatsoever and, uh, except blank records. It's very handy because as we add records in contacts, I want this to fill out this information for us. So I know what these field IDs are as I uh, create this webhook. So let's uh, come back into uh, contacts and I'll show you where webhooks are. It's under settings and there's webhooks. And as you click into here as new, you can name these and they look very much like email notifications where you can select if a particular field and certain conditions are met. It'll invoke this webhook down below here. So we've got a couple of things we need to do. We need to get the endpoint, we need to get a, an API uh, or a, uh, an app token, and we also need to get a user identity here. And we have to look at the API to see which one we're going to use. So we're going to use API add record as the first one to, to be. Whenever we create a record in the first table, it's going to create a record in the second table. So let's go about doing this. First thing I'll do is get an app token. Now, this allows us an additional level of security. Sometimes people don't use these, but under application properties on the app level, there's a thing called manage app tokens. Some people will just uncheck this and forego the idea of using that. But I like to bring this into uh, focus so that we can, um, in case you use them, you'll know how to do this. So here's a description we need to use this. We're gonna use this for webhook and it's okay to copy, and there, there's this number we needed. So I'm gonna grab that, make a copy of it. Now I've got a um, text pad here, so I'm going to paste my um, app token in here, and then come back. Now I also need to know the destination of what where I'm going, and that's what uh, this link is up above. Now it was a little off screen, but there's the, um, destination I'm going to and it's really right to there. So there's the destination I'm going to go to. So uh, let me copy that and let's begin creating the webhook to add a record um, to this table when we're when we've added one to this table. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to go to the source where it's happening, come down to webhooks and create and I'm going to say um, add um, contact and this one uh, is going to a particular spot there's that uh, destination and it's going to be an XML post and it's called a quick base action don't forget to put a dash in here and no spaces and this is going to be API underscore add record now how do I know all that stuff well, QuickBase has a, uh, an API, and I'll just do a regular QuickBase API Google search. And uh, you can see right here, help with, help with. And so I'm gonna click on this one, go right into the guide. And all of these functions in here, you can invoke with the uh, webhook. You can use these in buttons and do all different kinds of magical things inside of QuickBase. I'm going to come up here to API add record. There are two API add records. Uh, there's a gen add record form, which is if you're doing it with a browser and you're filling it out manually, but this is the automated one. So down below here, there are all kinds of backgrounds about what you can and cannot do uh, with this API, but way, 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 way down, and I apologize for the blur, way, way, way down here. We've got uh, examples of using field names or field IDs. 
Now, I'm, a, I'm a more of a fan of using this one here, the FIDs. This is the field IDs. We actually could use it by name, but if somebody should ever change their name, then it would break on you. So FIDs are kind of like uh, considered the way to go. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring this back over to here and paste this in here because this is where what we're going to use um, soon. Um, so uh, now we'll come back over to our web hook here as we're describing this. So whenever we add a contact, I would like to, um, and, and it's strictly when we're adding a contact, we come down here, that's the criteria. Um, I would like a quick base action here, and I'm going to paste this right in here. Now, there's a couple things to, to modify in here, um, and we'll just begin at the top right up here at the top, ticket. This is the, uh, uh, the authorization that you would get if you were doing an API authenticate, but we're not going to be doing that. QuickBase has a new functionality which talks about uh, being able to use user tokens. So if you click on your name, and actually let me save this here because as I mentioned, this is an iterative approach. We're going to click on uh, Name Manager uh, Preferences. And down below here, you says Manage User Tokens. So I'm going to create a brand new user token. And this one is going to be for demo. And uh, assign new tokens to one or more apps. And there's the app that we're creating, ABC Adding, Editing, and Deleting Records with Webhooks. So I'll click on Save. Okay, so what we've done is, is we've created this um, token. So we'll go back to the um, app. And let's see here. Are we into this one here? This is the API. This is, we're back. Okay, let's go into the uh, webhook. And you can see the uh, details in here. Instead of ticket, what we're going to say is um, user token. And user token. And if you um, highlight the verbiage that's in between there and come over here, there's actually a place where you can find uh, user tokens. And there it is right there, demo. I said we could use that magical token to be able to be used instead of API uh, Authenticate. Now this one doesn't expire, which is really great, and, but it's specific just to you. Let's come down here to App Token. What did we do about the App Token? Well, I have this right up here, so I'll copy that and I'll bring that in here and paste that right in there. Now notice there's a space here, and I've done this a number of times. I think there's a space here. Yes, there is, and there's a space over here. So you got to be careful about that as you're doing this. So now I need to know what, what field values I like to be able to add. So um, we need to um, save this and then go take a look at field values. So under contacts, this is the source. We know the field names here, which we'll be able to use company name title. As we um, come over to here, what I want to do is take a look at what, what they are over here. So I'll get on the page, or I could go into settings and fields, but I like to right click and edit the field properties. I don't know if you can see right down at the bottom of the screen here, edit field properties, this is six. So company uh, is six, and right click, edit field, that's seven, so name is seven, and let's see, title, right click, eight, eight, title. And I'm gonna do uh, address, Street 1, address Street 2, I mean, a whole bunch of other ones, is including the uh, phone, mobile, and email. Uh, look at how do I get the IDs for this. If you edit the field properties of an address and scroll down, what you can find is 
your uh, uh, street is 16, your city is 18, your state is 19. These are embedded fields, subfields, I guess you could call them state. And then let's see, postal code is 20 and country is 21. Okay, so we've got those. We know what those are. Uh, while we're here, we could do uh, PH phone, and you can see it's field 9. So phone is 9, and let's see, mobile is 10. And how many more are we going to do here? Let's just do email. Email is 11. Now, some people like this better to do this. I like to be on the form when I'm doing it, and nothing says you have to do one at a time. If you, if you kind of look down through here, you can uh, see the values. If you don't find them, go into Advanced Options and make sure they're checked so that you can see, see the field ID because they will disappear, or sometimes your app may not have them on by default. Okay, let's go back. Now we're ready to do the mapping. Uh, because what we want to do is have one field map over to the other field. So we'll go back into the contacts webhook and we'll continue on our journey of setting this one up. So we want to field ID, well, let's see, what's the first one? And it was uh, company, which is six. So I'm going to say six. And this is, instead of a hard coded text field here, I'm going to hover over this. Uh, and look for company. There's company. So company gets sent in here. And we know 7 is the contact. So we'll put that in here too. And this is or name. Am I right? Yep, 7's name. And then its title is 8. There's title, whoops, control Z. So this is actually eight. Name is seven. So we'll do we'll do title. Okay, I'm gonna pause just for a second, continue. Okay, let's resume. You can see I've finished off mapping the field IDs, which are the destination, along with the local field value here. And uh, so that's all we did was do a lot of substitutions. Let's save this and give it a test. Now I'm going to add a contact. Uh, you can see also this is active right now. And let's exit here. Let's create a brand new contact over here. And I'm going to create one. Um, and it'll be ABC XYZ uh, company. And it's uh, Tom Terrific. And his title is President. And he's at 1200 Massachusetts Avenue uh, in uh, Cambridge, Mass., or Boston. And so we'll do 617 555 1212 and 617-555-1313 and tt at example.com and uh, I guess that's all the information we have so it's not necessary for me to fill out the other information so let me click on save. All right so we've got a contact record let's go over here and we have a contact record over here so we have success uh, occasionally, what and there's the there's the record here. So occasionally you're going to do this, and you won't have success the very first time you do this. So I want to make you aware of this other very nice tool, which is you'll click in here, is this view error history, and this one will help you iterate through how to create a webhook and debug it on the fly. So uh, if you ever wish to put it to sleep or go back in to edit it, you can. Other administrators in your account can work on this webhook as well.
that's a way of creating a bit of automation inside of QuickBase. Every time a contact is created, it adds a contact in the other table.